Welcome to Modeling Monday, where I examine a real-world financial situation using Microsoft Excel. This tutorial is titled, Understanding the Difference Between Arithmetic Mean and Geometric Mean. Many times, investment returns or growth rates are quoted as simple averages. However, there's a big distinction between whether they're using arithmetic mean or geometric mean to describe those returns or growth rates. Arithmetic mean is the average of a set of numerical values calculated by adding them together and dividing by the number of terms in the set. This is also known as a simple average. Geometric mean, however, is the central number in a geometric progression also calculable as the nth root of a product of numbers. That might not make a lot of sense, uh, but what it is is we must use a common number that will essentially equal that growth rate if it was compounded based over that term. The biggest difference between these two is compounding. Geometric mean, or average, represents compounding, whereas the arithmetic mean does not. In this tutorial, we'll see why that is uh, important. In order to complete this tutorial, you will need to download this workbook at financialmodelingandexcel.com forward slash data. We will be using the worksheet named Mean. Let's begin. What we have here are three different investments, investments A, B, and C. You'll see that over the course of a 10-year period, they have a certain set of returns, and these returns vary based on the investment. So A has 8% each and every year, you'll notice investment B has either three percentage points above or below the return. You'll see it stagger from 5 to 11 across. And then this, investment C, will have a random set of investments. Some are negative, some are positive. We'll begin by filling in the mean. And for this, we're just going to use the term average for that formula. Average and then highlight what we want to average. In this case, we're just going to average B through K. And that's going to give us the mean, which would be 8%. If we, if we highlight that and drag it down, we'll notice that all three investments all have the same mean. And this is the arithmetic mean. This is just the simple average of these terms. Now we're going to use a new formula, standard deviation. Standard deviation shows the, on average, deviation from the mean. So the higher this number, the more volatile the returns are. So we're going to begin, use your equal sign, S-T-D-E-V-A will be the formula. And then we will also highlight the returns. That's a funky form format, so we're just going to show there. So because these all have the exact same returns. There's no deviation. They are the same, therefore their standard deviation will be zero. We'll copy that down, and then we'll notice three. As I mentioned earlier, each one of these returns was either three above or below the mean. And this, investment C, has a very high standard deviation of 0.12, which means that it varies dramatically from the mean. This will make sense as we do geometric mean. Now, geometric mean is not as simple. We're going to have to do a certain set of tasks in order to generate the geometric mean. To do this, first we have to find the annual compound rate. And to do this, we're going to have to generate some compound returns. So let's start referencing some cells. We'll begin by equal sign, and then click on B9. This is going to just give us our headings. Excellent, and then we can copy that and paste there. And perfect. So now we have our investment A, B, and C and the headings for each of the 10 years. Next, we're going to use our equal sign, one plus, and then reference the returns for year one for investment A. And we'll do the same thing down and across. Fantastic. In order for us to get compounding rates, we have to add 1. Otherwise, we'd be multiplying 0 0.08 times 0 0.08, which equals a very, very small number. And we'll keep getting smaller the farther we multiply across. So we're going to use here the product term. And that equals product. 
and then highlight our numbers. And this is what this is going to do is it's going to create the product of all of those figures. So multiple, how they multiply all together and what that is. So if we multiply 1.08, or in this case 108%, 10 times across, it's going to give us 215.9. Now that is the total, however, that's not the total return as we've added one to each of those numbers. Next, we're just going to go in the column next. So this is we can call this total. And now let's get average. We call that geo average. Excellent. Now we have to essentially discount this 215.9% for 10 years. So we're going to reference it equals this to the power of 1 divided by 10 and then we subtract out that one we originally came up with. We call that a percent. That's the formula. I'll go ahead and explain. So we take the 215 percent that was compounded then we take it to the power of 1 over the number we can also use the count function in this the numbers of years we have and when then we subtract one because we added one in the beginning and that will give us our geometric mean of point or point zero eight or eight percent. We can copy this down and we see that these numbers if we were to extend them a little bit farther go down. So this is less than 8%, and that takes into account the fact of the standard deviation. The higher the standard deviation, the lower the geometric mean is. Let's look at an example. What if we were to invest $100? And we'll just right click copy. I'm just going to use these returns. So we'll need three and paste. Excellent. So what if we were to invest $100? at this particular rate. We would do equals $100 times the total value. So in this case, with an 8% geometric average, I would come out with $215.89. In investment B, $215.06. Pretty close because the standard deviation is relatively low at just 3 at 3%. However, in the case of investment C with a very high standard deviation of 12%, I would only have $204.06. Now if stated that I had a annual arithmetic return of 8%, that would be correct. However, geometrically speaking, with a geometric mean, the rates are very, very different. We can, using some advanced techniques, we can also use an array formula to calculate the geometric mean in one cell without having to use these intermediate cells. And how we do that is we would equal product, open our parentheses, but in this case we're going to do one plus and then highlight the array of cells, close our parentheses, that we'd like to multiply together. What this formula is going to say is that we are going to take the product of one plus each of those cells and multiply them all together and give you my total. Because this is an array, we have to hold down the control, shift keys, and then hit enter. And we'll notice it matches the returns that we see. But this is not the actual geometric mean. This is merely the cumulative total of those returns. So what do we need to do? We need to take it to the power of 1 divided by, and in this case I'm going to use the count function of count A to count the number of arguments that I have highlight those cells, close my parentheses, and then, see so we gotta close it one more time, minus one to take out that one we initially added in. Hold down control, hold down shift, and hit enter. And if we copy that down, we'll see that our numbers match the numbers below. And that is the difference between geometric mean and arithmetic mean. I hope you found it interesting and I look forward to seeing you next time. Happy modeling!